بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما in this video i'm going to give an overview of the ccnp enterprise course uh, the enterprise paper there is something called nrc 30410 so i'm going to quickly walk through with the details of that so again as you know the cisco introduced the new track called ccnp enterprise from february 24 like if you if you just go back with the previous before february to february 20 24 2020 we need to pass three four papers in each ccnp track you have three four papers and you have to pass them probably from uh, february 24 2020 there is no prerequisite exams so which means you don't need to uh, go for ccna exam before ccnp so the 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 pattern is completely changed by cisco now now if you want to get ccnp certified now in the ccnp track we have two uh, divisions we have something called technology core exam like if you take the ccnp enterprise track in this we have something called n core that is kind of core paper which is uh, which is like a mandatory paper you need to you need to learn and also you need to pass if you want to go for ccnp or cci certifications and then we have something like concentration exams now in the concentration exams we have multiple papers now you can choose any one of this so each concentration exam paper specializes a few things like if you want to specialize yourself into advanced routing probably you have to select this paper and if you want to uh, expertise on on sd wan solutions then probably you go with this so if you want to get into designing enterprise networks so probably there is another paper on that and then these two papers are more into wireless and then this is on automation so depending upon your interest depending upon the requirement uh, of your company so you can choose any one of these certifications now again uh, one thing also you need to know is uh, this encore paper is also a prerequisite exam for your cci certification like earlier we used to like we say that okay if you want to go for cci lab you have to write the cci written exam then you can go and uh, book the lab exam and you can go for the cci lab now it's no more you need to go with the ccnp enterprise uh, core paper that is again equivalent to your kind of cci written again this these things we have already covered in the certification part so probably Uh, you need to know this concept so mainly the core paper is more focused on foundations so it's going to cover all this technologies little bit foundations here but again if you want to expertise on individual tracks then probably you have concentration papers and probably here i'm going to give an overview on the enterprise uh, advanced routing services this one so let's get into that now the exam code is 300410 the ccnp enterprise advanced routing and services and again it started from february 24 2020 now uh, same thing so if you are preparing yourself for this paper then probably you will be associated with multiple certifications like if you are going with ccnp encore plus this paper let's say an rc paper then probably you get ccnp enterprise certification or if you just pass this nrc paper then you will be getting a certified a special certification or even you you will be getting something called enterprise advanced infrastructure implementation certification so probably these are the specific certificates you get or certifications associated with uh, with this paper now again the course what i'm preparing here again it's it's something around 50 hours of content so currently uh probably i'm add few more videos probably in the next couple of weeks probably i'm adding some troubleshooting videos as well into that so the content will be around 50 plus hours and 300 plus training videos now again there will be like 20 to 30% of the uh, videos or topics will overlap with your core paper as i discuss the core paper will be uh, will be covering the foundation so here also if you are not if you are not gone through with my core paper then probably you'll find the contents here so but there will be a few topics the foundation topics will overlap with your uh, core paper as well now now again the, it's a kind of lifetime access you have you can 
you can watch these videos on on your mobile on your laptops uh, by using the same account then also will be i'll be sharing the workbook uh, which includes the screenshots of the presentations and also the lab documentations along with the softwares like gns3 and the images those stuff probably you can set up uh, the labs uh, by setting up the gns3 and you can practice those labs on your own device now again the prerequisite knowledge what you need to know um, ccna level uh, knowledge is something you need to have if you have already done ccnp enterprise code that is something preferable even though i have covered the foundation topics here as well so if you have not done encore also still you can go ahead with the uh, with the videos uh, probably you don't find uh, much problem because i have already covered the foundation videos here as well so if you have any any kind of working experience that's something uh, will be an added advantage okay so so most likely if you if you want to get your copy of the videos or specifically the workbook and the software you can send us an email uh, probably i'll be i'll be sharing those uh, content as well the workbooks and other stuff now let's let's get into the content so the content is actually vast just like your core paper so i'll quickly give an basic idea of the content what we'll be covering in this course so we'll be starting with uh, basics like ipv6 uh, ipv6 is more like ccna level ipv6 i expect you to know but again these are again even if you are new to the ipv6 so you'll be getting started with the basics of ipv6 here and then you'll go on implementing the ipv6 with different types of routing options and then uh, summarization options as well and then redistributions redistribution again you'll you'll see for ipv4 as well as ipv6 redistribution concepts and then we get into the routing protocols so majorly we'll cover ehrp and ospf in depth here so we have already covered in the core paper these protocols but we'll be getting more deeper and more in depth of these protocols with troubleshooting so if you try to see these are uh, more like a basic uh, ehrp which we have already covered in the ccna or the enterprise core papers but again moving on to the next sections you will find the advanced ehrp options where we'll be getting into some kind of optimizing the ehrp protocol and also we'll be getting into something like ehrp name mode which is a new way to configure the ipv4 and ipv6 uh, uh, implementations in the new ios versions we'll try to understand that particular configuration hierarchy based on the based on the new method we call it as ehrp name mode and once we are done with this so probably the troubleshooting part i'll be covering all protocol troubleshooting in the last so because mostly the methodology remains the same for all the types of protocols so getting into the ospf again the first two sections will be more like the same ospf content what we have seen in the ccna or the ccnp enterprise core paper and core paper like this these three sections understanding the basic ospf and the ospf configuration in a single area and then understanding the metric values in the ospf uh, using multiple areas as well and then the behavior of the ospf in different network types and there is something called drbd elections we'll try to see that options so additionally we'll be adding something called default root advertisements now default routes are more required especially when you are connecting your corporate network the company network to the internet so with the help of default routes static default routing we can allow uh, unknown traffic to to go over the internet but you may want all your branch offices to to be able to access internet from a single location so how that can be done by using the default routes and then and then we get into some advanced options like osp of virtual links lsa types understanding and also the stubs concept stubs is very important one where you you generally optimize your osp of especially when you have hundreds of routers there will be a bigger routing table so we can optimize that by using stubs so there are multiple options in the stubs we'll see there are four different types of stubs we'll be covering in this section here and of course i'll be adding some more enhancements here like the the new method uh, probably i'll be adding that in the new ios versions there are few enhancements we'll be covering that 
okay so that's that's it so probably not the ISS this is something not uh, present here now also we'll see something called routing protocol authentication now authentication ensures that the routing updates are secure so we can prevent uh, route routing protocol spoofing there is something called spoofing attack probably to prevent that we can implement authentication with routing protocols so that is what this section is about so probably up to here we will be done uh, with our igp protocols then we'll jump into some route filtering options so in the route filtering we'll see what is route filtering and then different ways to do filtering using passive interfaces distribution list prefix list how they work and then we'll also get into some route maps which are commonly used for many many reasons like path manipulations and many other uh, advanced options we use especially in bgp as well so we'll try to understand policy based routing how it works and different options of policy based routing with labs we'll verify them and then we'll get into the bgp so bgp is more like the same uh, what we have covered in the ccnp enterprise core uh, but additionally we'll be doing some kind of troubleshooting here so we'll we'll try to understand the bgp neighbors and then uh, internal versus external neighbors and then we'll also see some of the attributes the basic attributes we use and also with some labs where we'll be doing some path manipulation as well additionally we'll also add some troubleshooting as i said troubleshooting will be covering uh, completely in the last now once we are done with the routing part so this is more on the routing part so additionally what you have in this uh, paper is we have vpn section so in that vpn again we have something like the basic vpns gre dm vpn and also you need to understand mpls vpn and also some ipsec vpn as well so we'll be covering these four major types of vpns in this paper so starting with the basics what is vpn and then uh, why we use vpns how they scale how we can connect vpns over internet to sites connecting over internet with the help of simple gre which is very basic very simple very easy but not scalable so if you want to go with a scalability then we go with a dynamic multi-point vpn so when you have hundreds of sites dm vpn is the solution so we'll, we'll understand the dm vpn concepts and then we'll move on with the different phases of the dm vpn like phase one and how it behaves and the phase two how it behaves now phases are like different ways you uh, make the tunnels to work or the routing to work so in today's network we use phase 3 most commonly but again to understand we need to know phase 1 and phase 2 and then one of the limitation with the dmv pin is it is uh, scalable even if you have hundreds of sites you can build dynamic tunnels but now the question is like it doesn't secure the tunnels because the traffic if it is if you are connecting vpn over internet it is not secure so to provide some kind of security you need to apply some something called ipsec so that's where we get into that ipsec we'll try to understand what is ipsec and the theoretical part and then we'll try to set up one simple ipsec vpn without any other uh, vpns side to side but again side to side vpn is just like you know point to point mostly we use dm vpn so we'll be applying dm vpn with ipsec because the dm vpn provide a scalability hundreds of sites can be connected easily and ipsec is applied over it which provides security like encryption we'll see that as well and then we'll move on to the mpls vpn section so we are not going to cover the core mpls core mpls is something what you will see in the service border track but on the customer side on the enterprise networks you still need to know mpls l3 vpns and that's what we'll be focusing here so the mpls vpn models and then the label distribution how it works inside with labs and also mpls l3 vpn how what are the steps there are six steps we'll be seeing step one two three four five six and then with the help of different routing protocols the configuration changes uh, it will be because some customers may use ehrp some customers may prefer ospf some customers may 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 go with bgp so you need to know all the different uh, routing options with mpls vpns 
and I will quickly over, give an overview of some advanced option as well. But most of these advanced options are something you will see in the service product track. Not here, but I, I, I just given some basic foundational overview so that you can understand uh, what is traffic engineering, how M interface M MPLS VPN between multiple service products. So that is kind of uh, basic foundation knowledge. Uh, also, I covered here, but not in depth here. And finally, troubleshooting. Troubleshooting, I have added here itself uh, because MPLS VPN troubleshooting, it's something you need to know. So there is a lab specific where I have uh, created some issues and will verify with, with labs here. So mostly this is this part is like the second part is more like a VPN part. The first part is like routing for IP version 4 and IP version 6. And the last part, probably the third part we can say, third uh, part, we have something called uh, security and services. We'll try to get into some uh, services like understanding the in different planes, data plane, control plane, management plane, and then how we secure the management plane by using SSH, and then enabling some services, how you enable the DHCP service on the routers for IP version 4 and IP version 6. And then some other services like NTP, logging, SNMP, SLAs. And also, uh, we also get into this Devnet uh, sandboxes, how to resolve the labs, and the DNS center. So DNS center is something you need to know. So probably these two topics are already part of the core paper where I have covered already. So if you are if you have not done the core paper, then probably uh, as per the NRC paper, this paper, Enterprise Advanced Routing Paper, you need to know these concepts as well. Now next we'll move on to the security. Now once we cover the services, we'll move on to the security. Again, ACLs, standard ACL, extended ACL, named ACLs. So mostly this is the same part uh, as, as what you have done in the CCNA, maybe the old, maybe new. Additionally, you will see a few new things like IPv6, ACL, time-based ACL. These are the additional options you may see. So if you have already covered these things in my videos, in my new CCNA or enterprise score, probably you can skip most of this part, uh, except the three, four videos which I have added in this section. And then AAA, AAA concepts, understanding the AAA authentication as well as authorization. Authorization and then control plane security options, understanding the control plane policing. This, this all uh, comes under security. Again, also there is something called IPv6 security options also will be seen. So that is like the next part. Like the first part is more on routing and then VPNs and then some services, security. And finally, the last one is the troubleshooting. Now here we'll be seeing some troubleshooting uh, scenarios uh, where we'll try to understand the common troubleshooting uh, methodology you need to go with. And then we'll try to we'll try to divide, okay, if you are using EHRP, then what are the things you need to check? What are the show commands you need to verify? So if possible, we'll try to uh, create some problems with some labs, we'll try to verify as well. The same thing for IPv6. So there's no much difference in IPv4 or IPv6 because the protocol behavior is same for both. Same way we also get into OSPF v2, that is for IPv4 and then OSPF v3. And then troubleshooting the redistribution. If you are doing redistribution in your network, then what are the things you need to check uh, probably? And then troubleshooting the BGP again, and then troubleshoot troubleshooting the access list or prefix list, route filtering methods if you are using how you are going to check them. And then finally troubleshooting some management tools and the services, those options. So this is something what uh, the content overview, even though I have just given a basic overview, but you, you can see there's a lot of content we'll be covering, especially in this advanced routing and the services paper. 